the provision, fitting, marking and use of emergency equipment is governed by many requirements and regulations listed in EASA publications. The majority of the regulations quoted in this lesson are from the EASA publication EU OPS 1, subpart K. At the end of the lesson, you will be given the opportunity to read this subpart in full. All equipment described in this lesson must be readily accessible for emergency use. The equipment must be located so that it is easily seen, directly accessible and protected from inadvertent damage. All aeroplanes with a maximum approved seating capacity of more than 19 must have a public address system installed. The system must be readily accessible for immediate use from the flight deck. This is achieved by either having a handheld microphone that all flight crew members can access or by having the system operable through the crew headset microphones. At least one microphone must be available for use by a cabin crew member at each floor level exit in the passenger compartment. The public address must be audible and intelligible at all passenger seats, toilets, cabin crew seats and workstations. Megaphones are located at strategic points in the cabin and are primarily for use by the crew during an emergency evacuation. They are battery powered and must be checked prior to flight. The check is carried out either by pressing the transmit switch and listening for an audible click or by checking the illumination of a green neon light on the megaphone body. The number of megaphones required is stipulated in the regulations. There must be a minimum of one megaphone for each passenger deck that has a passenger seating configuration of 60 to 99 and two megaphones for each passenger deck with a seating configuration of 100 or more. It is a regulatory requirement that on public transport aircraft an electric torch is positioned at each crew station, including the flight deck stations. Torches are battery operated and are not able to be recharged from the aircraft electrical supply. An indication of battery condition is given by a red neon light situated on the body of the torch which flashes at least once every 10 seconds if the battery and bulb are both serviceable. If the red neon light is flashing less than once every 10 seconds or not flashing at all the batteries need to be replaced or the torch bulb has failed. In most installations the torch has no switch and the light comes on as soon as the torch is removed from its stowage. We will now examine the regulations concerning life jackets. Land aeroplanes, when flying over water at a distance of more than 50 nautical miles from the shore, or when taking off from or landing at an aerodrome where the takeoff or approach path is so disposed over water that in the event of a mishap there will be a likelihood of a ditching, or seaplanes and amphibians operating on water, must have on board a life jacket equipped with a survivor locator light for each person on board. Each life jacket must be stowed in a position easily accessible from the seat or berth of the person for whose use it is provided. Life jackets for infants may be substituted by other approved flotation devices equipped with a survivor locator light. Life jackets are normally packed in special containers for ease of handling and protection. Stowage in this manner will ensure that the jacket is maintained correctly folded to ensure easy and rapid fitting if required for use. Instructions for fitting are printed on the container and or the jacket and are also included on the safety leaflet 
which all passengers are asked to read prior to takeoff. The normal stowage is under the seat for passengers and in any easily reached stowage for the crew. Life jackets used for demonstration purposes are usually marked demo only or dummy and must not be kept in normal stowage locations. Passenger life jackets are normally coloured yellow as an aid to identification. Buoyancy is achieved by inflating the jacket with carbon dioxide gas, which is stored under pressure in a small bottle or cylinder and released manually by the operation of a red toggle or lever. Once the inflation process is instigated, it cannot be stopped. A standby or top-up method of inflation by mouth is available through an oral inflation tube. The tube usually contains a valve, which can be operated by a finger if it is desired to lower or release the pressure on the jacket. The survival locator light is usually powered by a saltwater activated battery, the operation of which is automatic when it is immersed in salt water. As well as the light, a life jacket will usually also have a whistle attached to it for attracting attention and a lifeline to enable survivors to tie themselves together. Crew jackets are coloured either brilliant yellow with the word crew printed on them or flame red. They may also have a number of other items of survival equipment fitted. These may include a heliograph or signal mirror, seawater dye or a signal streamer, shark repellent, and possibly a personal locator beacon or PLB. When switched on, the PLB will transmit on the Civil International Aviation Distress Frequencies of 406 and 121.5 MHz, and possibly on the military distress frequency of 243 MHz. It may also have a speech transmission and reception facility on 121.5 MHz. Many personal locator beacons also have the facility to transmit a global positioning system generated position, accurate to a few meters. The life jacket is usually constructed of rubberized fabric and contains a single air chamber which covers the chest and extends round either side of the neck to form a cushion at the back of the neck. The jacket is secured by tapes which are tied around the body prior to inflation. Adult life jackets should not be inflated prior to leaving the aircraft or the bulk of a fully inflated jacket on an adult may cause a problem when leaving the aircraft through an escape hatch. When correctly fitted and fully inflated, the jacket will turn an unconscious person onto their back and support them at about 45 degrees, with their face clear of the water. The regulations regarding the carriage of life rafts and survival emergency locator transmitters on flights over water split aeroplanes into two groups. If an aeroplane capable of continuing flight to an aerodrome following an engine failure is operated more than 400 nautical miles or 120 minutes at cruising speed, whichever is the least, away from land, or if any other aeroplane is operated 100 nautical miles or 30 minutes at cruising speed, again, whichever is the least, away from land, then sufficient life rafts must be available to carry all persons on board. And at least two survival emergency locator transmitters, capable of transmitting on the distress frequencies of 406 MHz and 121.5 MHz, must be carried.
if life rafts are required, sufficient must be carried to accommodate all the occupants of the aircraft if one raft of the largest capacity is lost. Each life raft must be equipped with a survival locator light and sufficient life-saving equipment and means of sustaining life as appropriate to the flight to be undertaken. The equipment is carried in a survival pack stowed in the raft. The pack may contain puncture repair kits, flares, sea markers, a pump to maintain the pressure of the raft, and torches. Emergency rations and water sachets will also be included in the equipment. Many large aircraft utilize their escape slides as survival rafts, each of which can accommodate up to 60 people. These dual-purpose slides are known as slide rafts. For a slide to be used as a life raft, it is first deployed as in an emergency evacuation, and it is then released from the aircraft by pulling a release handle located on the floor in the doorway. A protective canopy can be rigged. Slide rafts are connected to the aircraft by a mooring line which has to be cut to free the raft. However, if the aircraft should sink, the line is designed to break before the raft is pulled down. For aeroplanes without slides, or where the slides cannot be used as rafts, or to supplement the slides, standalone life rafts will be carried. Standalone life raft capacities vary, with 30 being the normal maximum. Standalone life rafts should be attached to a strong point in the aircraft by a line before they are thrown out of the exit. As with slide rafts, this line is designed to break should the aircraft sink while the raft is still attached to it. The Survival Emergency Locator Beacon is a self-buoyant radio distress beacon with an 80 mile range. It provides at least 48 hours continuous transmission. On the Civil International Aviation Distress Frequencies of 406 and 121.5 MHz. The beacon can be operated on land or it will float in water. The beacon has a whip type of aerial, which is held to the side of the case by quick release straps. There is a bag containing a tow line which can be used to fasten the beacon to the life raft. There is a red coloured release toggle on the side of the case. The beacon is operated by pulling on the red release toggle which would release the straps holding the aerial. Releasing the straps will allow the aerial to spring to the vertical position and switch on the radio transmitter. A neon lamp on top of the beacon will continuously flash, indicating the beacon is transmitting. The volume, weight and shape of the cylinder as such as to provide sufficient buoyancy to maintain the aerial in a vertical position when the unit is in water. There is worldwide satellite coverage on the 406 MHz frequency using the SARSAT system. Once the beacon is activated, a message will be with the rescue services within 10 minutes. The beacon's position will be known to within a radius of 2.6 nautical miles. Some newer beacons also have global positioning system or GPS information embedded in them and will transmit their exact position. The beacon may also transmit a unique code which allows the aircraft in distress to be identified. The regulations require survival equipment to be carried on flights over land where search and rescue would be especially difficult. Typical areas would be mountainous or polar areas where there is little human habitation. 
The equipment must include pyrotechnic flares, a survival emergency locator transmitter, and additional survival equipment for the route to be flown, taking account of the number of persons on board. The additional equipment need not be carried, provided the aircraft remains within a laid-down distance from an area where search and rescue is not especially difficult. This distance varies depending on the aircraft type. Aeroplane certified TEASA CS25 or equivalent must carry the required equipment when operating at a distance greater than that corresponding to 90 minutes at cruising speed from an area suitable for making an, an emergency landing. There are three sets of first aid equipment normally carried in larger aircraft. They are known as first aid kits, emergency medical kits and life raft first aid kits. First aid kits are readily accessible for use. They are designed for use by cabin crew for the treatment of minor injuries and ailments. The regulations list the required contents. They are mainly items you would expect to find in a household first aid kit, plus a contents list and survival booklet. The contents list should contain information on the effects and side effects of any drugs carried. The number of first aid kits required varies with the number of passenger seats available, as shown in this table. If an aeroplane with a maximum approved seating capacity of more than 30 seats is operated more than 60 minutes flying time from an aerodrome at which qualified medical assistance can be expected to be available, it must be equipped with an emergency medical kit, commonly referred to as a doctor's kit. The regulations again list the items to be carried in this kit. There are many prescription type drugs on the list, as well as equipment for carrying out minor surgical procedures. The aircraft commander is responsible for ensuring that drugs from this kit are not administered except by qualified doctors, nurses or similarly qualified personnel. The Life Raft First Aid Kit is situated in the survival pack of the life raft and includes seasickness tablets and a survival booklet. A pair of fireproof gloves is usually stowed on the flight deck for use in handling overheated equipment. They are normally made of Nomex with silver heat resistance coating. Nomex is a synthetic material with excellent heat resistant properties. An aeroplane with a maximum takeoff mass exceeding 5,700 kilograms, or having a maximum approved seating capacity of more than nine seats, must have at least one crash axe or crowbar on the flight deck. If the maximum approved passenger seating configuration is more than 200, an additional crash axe or crowbar must be carried and located in or near the most rearward galley area. Crash axes and crowbars located in the passenger compartment must not be visible to passengers. They are used for levering and lifting hot panels or access doors to fight a fire behind them with a handheld extinguisher. Crash axes are generally being phased out in favour of crowbars. That is the end of the lesson. The most important parts of this lesson are the regulations contained in EU OPS 1, subpart K. You need to have a good knowledge of these regulations. The relevant extracts are displayed on the screen. The regulations are available online.